because I close my Duolingo app and I go out in the world and I speak Spanish. All right, guys, it's Gene here. Yo tengo un enemigo. Just the one. I'm not trying hard enough. I'm doing Duolingo on the desktop version. So that's what it looks like if you're pretending to be a Russian speaker learning Spanish. I don't particularly love this. Yay, 1,640 days. But I left my iPad at home. There's nothing wrong with El Chico es Alto. But there's also nothing wrong with the clarity and simplicity of Pari and Soki. This is a beautiful word. This is good. Chila Vyachispa. La humanidad. That is a Slavic word. I think. Whereas gentlemen. <laughs> El caballero. Wow. Compañón was not a vocabulary word at the time. Not that I remember seeing. The iPad is my new favorite way to do Duolingo. Why? Because as I have said in other videos that I've posted on YouTube, the iPhone app wants you to pay 200 gems or whatever the currency is in order to test out of a level, to level up. Whereas the iPad version doesn't, doesn't make you pay 200 gems. The desktop version doesn't either, but what I don't like about it is what are these gems over here? 17,591 because when I do the iPhone slash iPad version, I have like 80,000 gems. I just think that Duolingo has two or three different teams working on Android, I, uh, Apple, and desktop versions and just trying to see what works best. So anyway, right now we're going to pretend like I'm a Russian speaker, and as you know from my previous videos, I am not, who is trying to learn Spanish. Okay, so this is Spanish for Russian speaker. And I want to level up. Let's say I want to take this one right here, Ludi, people. And I want to test out, and I want to level up from level one to level two. I'm using... I'm using the Surface Pro with the pencil that comes with it. I started using this when I got my... I never once used this thing until I got an iPad Pro 2020 and an eye pencil to go with it, which I love. And I'm like, oh, wow, this, this is really useful. Then I started using the pencil that came with my Surface Pro. All right, so anyway, let me put my granny glasses on here. Das urovien adin. Yarmarka vaskresenye. All right. What is on Sunday? La compañera, la costumbre, or la feria? All right. Nosotros somos testigos de una nueva revolución. Nosotros somos testigos de una nueva revolución. All right. She said, love the clarity and simplicity of Russian. It like gets rid of a bunch of really extraneous things like present tense linking verbs and articles, for example. And, you know, you think of, there's this like stereotype of the caveman. Ooh, me hungry, right? <clears throat> and then civilization is, you know, I'm feeling a bit peckish and you've got I am feeling and these like fancy present progressive conjugations of, of these verbs and it's all unnecessary. And then you come back to clarity and simplicity of communication. And I just think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. Adin parin y adnat yevoshka. Gente joven. Gente joven. Gente joven. Malodios. Rabotnik. La cerveza es para los campesinos. La cerveza es para los campesinos. Moi. Compañón, compañón, I'm going to tell you something. When, when I first started dabbling in Russian almost 30 years ago, within mere days, weeks of the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, the Soviet Union disbanded in what? September or October of 1991. And by Halloween, I had checked in and started my first Russian class. I'm talking weeks after the fall of the Soviet Union. Anyway, compañón was not a vocabulary word at the time. Not that I remember seeing. 
A lot happens in, in, with, with the language in 29 years. That's a third of a century, you know. Anyway, that's not a pretty... There was a character in an Alexander Solzhenitsyn book. Was it Archipelag Gulak? Or was it Pierre Kruk? Or maybe it was uh, Dean Dian Ivana Denisovich. Uh, but anyway, there was this highly educated literati type in the prison with Solzhenitsyn and he was real super stuck up about only using words of Slavic origin and so like words like ingenier and compagnon he would he would just he would dig if he had to or he would make up a word just the same way we do now with present day technology heuristics and and all the high tech electronics and cyberspace stuff, we grab these words from, you know, ancient Greek and to a lesser extent from Latin, I suppose. I don't know where we get them all from, but we hobble these these terms together. Uh, well, he did the same thing by going to old church Slavonic and stuff. And I thought it was cool. And I always think of that guy when I see these words like compagnon and ingenier used in businessmen's businessmen to me. It's, it's a business me enemy that's so annoying, you know. I mean, it's great. If that's the way people talk, that's fine. Languages evolve. I'm not fighting that. I'm just saying there are people out there in Russia who are kind of purists about it. And they're like, why would you say it's business, business me enemy when there's, you know, perfectly good Russian words that you could use? Anyway. I think languages are rich and cool, and I love borrowing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying I see these words like compagnon that I didn't, never used to see back in the day. Anyway. Yo tengo un enemigo. Just the one. I'm not trying hard enough. Nosot no. Somos compañeros. Wow. Yo soy testigo. Harsh language. No. Amiga. Tienes enemigos. What is this? Is it, this is beauty? Is the, is the title of the lesson? See, now this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful word. This is good. Chila Vyacheshva. La humanidad. That is a Slavic word. I think. Whereas gentlemen. <laughs> El caballero. Wow. Somos individuos. Muy lichnesti. Parin visoki. El. Chi es alto. Parin visoki. See how clean and clear and boiled down and almost, it's almost precise. There's nothing wrong with el chico es alto. But there's also nothing wrong with the clarity and simplicity of parin visoki. Después del matrimonio. Un bigay by Zilami Lutmi. El corre con los viejos. Yo soy tu amigo. So that's what it looks like if you're pretending to be a Russian speaker learning Spanish. You know, it's funny that, yay, 1,640 day streak. It's funny that. I want to show you guys something before I, before I, I kill the recording. So for for do you guys Ruski? They got English, German, French, Spanish, and Swedish. But if you say I speak French, look at this. I think I think this is funny. If I speak French, they got English, they got Spanish, they got Italian, they got German, they got Portuguese, and they got Esperanto. But they only create courses for which there is an interest or a demand, and the French don't want to learn other languages. There's a tiny handful of languages for, for speakers of French. I already speak French. Why do I need to learn another language? Oh, there's another thing I want to show you about the desktop version that I really like. It's not available on iPhone, uh, iPhone or iPad. It's the Slavar. Slavar. And it shows you... The Spanish words that you, dear Russian speaker, have learned so far and suck at, right? It's just you've learned 502 words and your strength is weak. 
right? Now, there is a time component to this, which renders this inaccurate. It says you haven't done any courses in a long time, and therefore you are weak. But the way this, the algorithm that they use, I suppose, in order to determine the strength or weakness of your command of any of these vocabulary words doesn't factor into account, doesn't account for your speaking that language outside of the Duolingo app. I think it's really cool that Duolingo um, has analytics that, that, that track your exposure to vocabulary words, which is really cool, but it doesn't accurately determine the strength or weakness of your grasp of that vocabulary word. Because I close my Duolingo app and I go out in the world and I speak Spanish. I close my Duolingo app and I go out into the world and I speak Spanish at, uh, at, at work or, or at the store or at a restaurant. And so, or, you know, I'll close my Duolingo app and I'll read some news articles in French. And does that really mean, does that really mean, you know, that, that I've gotten a week? No, the algorithm only accounts for it's a long time since you studied Spanish and that's why all your words are weak. And I kind of took a break because I was playing with Spanish for for the sake of a, one of my YouTube subscribers. I'm systematically working my way up to, to level two on uh, Russian. See, we got the strength is high here, right? And that's because I've recently been in there doing it. It says that I've learned 2,285 words. You see that? And it shows strength high. Right, but it's only metric as to whether or not my command of these, it says Duolingo's algorithms figure out when you should practice words to get them into your long-term memory. Well, wait a minute, slow down trigger. You're, you downgrade me based on my not having taken these courses in a while. I've been switching over to other courses. That doesn't mean, well, I guess it can mean that I've gotten weaker in those. I love this. I just think that the algorithm is just a little bit in need of tweaking, you know? Because like I said, I may or may not be just as strong as I need to be in all of these words. Shows me the weak ones here. See that? But what I am saying is that on lessons that I haven't done in a long time, you've downgraded me just because I haven't taken Spanish for English speakers in who knows how long. That's what I want to show you. Things you can do. Things you can do on the desktop version of Duolingo that you cannot do on your iPad or iPhone. Or at least not that I've figured out. Not without going into Safari or a browser. I like using the app. One more thing is, if I'm about to take a trip somewhere, and I want to bone up on some specific, you know, travel related phrases. And I'm going to a business meeting in another country, or I, I'm going to pay a, if, I, if I'm going to pay a visit to Mexico, I'm going to go see a friend in Mexico, or I want to go to the dentist in Mexico. I want to be able to go to Duolingo and say, I got a trip coming up. Let's skip all this crap about how the bird is chasing the, squirrel or whatever and just hone in on actual useful daily stuff that's what i'd really like to be able to do on duolingo i would like to change my goals is i want to hone in banking at the airport in the taxi cab at the restaurant in the supermarket at the hotel room service massage parlor Anyway, that's one thing I'd like to see Duolingo do is give me the give me the ability to hone in and start hammering stuff that I know I am gonna need when I make that trip.